are our announcements for the church for February the 4th. We wish to welcome everyone today. Thank you for joining us as we explore our relationship with God. We hope that you will find comfort and grace as you listen to the worship service. This week and next week, we are worshiping at Maribel Church at 9.30 a.m. and everyone is welcome to join us in person if you can. Our church welcomes everyone with openness, inclusion, love and respect. We are a caring pastoral charge and do our best to support many organizations in our city. Reverend Sandra Ewell will be away on holidays starting Monday, February the 5th until Monday, March 5th. Please let Judy Lancaster know if you need assistance in any way. Both churches can easily be found on the internet under Merivale Fallowfield Church, where you can find our addresses and contact information. And our final announcement, it is now time to work on the annual reports. Please send your committee reports to Judy as soon as you can. Have a great week. God bless. Light of the world, as we light this candle, we acknowledge your love and kindness. We acknowledge your coming and your sacrifice, and we celebrate the gifts of your word and the spirit. May your light enlighten our minds and spirits so that we might in turn give light to others. Please join me for our opening prayer. God of our past, present, and future, we come before you today mindful of your covenant with us. And today we affirm your close relationship with each and every one of us gathered here online, as well as your concern for all of humanity. This morning we come seeking your presence, O God, to make our hearts new and sustain us in your love. We know that we need your grace and love to make our souls new and strengthen us for the journey of following the ways of Jesus. Be with us, O God, and make us your people. 
And may you, the God who surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and our minds during this time of worship. We pray that you will open our awareness that we might discover the calling to be better people, honorable and compassionate people, and break open our spirits on this Sunday so that we might truly embrace the message of Jesus that calls us to rejoice as we travel with each other along this amazing journey of faith. O oh God, you make all things new, and so we thank you for this Sunday, and we thank you for this new day today, and for all the potentials it holds. And now, Holy One, hear us as we say the ancient prayer of our ancestors. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom, then, will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because he is great in strength, mighty in power, no one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and assert, O Israel, 
My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Herein is wisdom. Thanks be to God.
Our second reading is from Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 to 39. Jesus heals many at Simon's house. As they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening, at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed by demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went through all Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues, and casting out demons. Herein is good news. Praise be to Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts always be aligned with your love, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In the order of service this morning, I titled this sermon, Are We on Board with Exorcism? But I think a better title would have been A Message of Liberation and Love. Our scripture today talks about Jesus casting out many demons. And the topic of Jesus as an exorcist for us is a difficult one because not too many of us believe in demons anymore. In Hebrew, the word for demon is shedim. And shedim do not, however, correspond exactly to the modern conception of demons as evil entities as originated in Christianity. With the translation of Hebrew texts into Greek, the term Shadim was translated into Greek as daimonion, with implicit connotations of negativity. It wasn't the case before that. So I think this is an important point to understand 
uh, before going further with our text. Today, I would like to reflect upon a dimension of Jesus that is both profound and deeply touching, and that is his role as a compassionate healer, specifically in the context of casting out so-called demons. Mark is not the only scripture in which we find Jesus casting out demons. The Gospels are replete with narratives that highlight Jesus' infinite compassion and understanding toward those who apparently are afflicted by demonic possession. We don't really know what exactly was going on with people who were considered by others to be afflicted by demons back then. But this we know for sure. They would have been shunned and labeled as outcasts, but not with Jesus. Jesus had an unwavering compassion for those who society labeled afflicted with impure spirits. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5, verses 1 to 20, we encounter the story of the Gerasene demoniac. And this man, tormented by an unclean spirit, lived among the tombs, a life marked by isolation and suffering and shunning by others. The chains that once bound him were broken, not by human hands, but by the torment within. Yet when Jesus steps onto the shores of the Gerasenes, he steps into the chaos of this man's life with a compassion that would forever change him. What is profoundly moving about this encounter is Jesus' immediate recognition of the man's suffering and his readiness to heal him. He didn't see a man to be feared or shunned. He saw a child of God, a desperate human needing liberation. When Jesus commands the unclean spirit to leave, he does so with an authority that is definitive and compassionate. This act of healing was a profound statement of Jesus' desire to restore those deemed irredeemable by society to their community and to their dignity. If we miss that aspect of the story, we miss the main point altogether. Jesus' healing of the demon-possessed man is a powerful reminder of the depth of his love for all of humanity. Jesus looks beyond people's brokenness, people's past, and any chains that prevent others from seeing their worth and potential. In Jesus' eyes, no one is too lost, too damaged, or too far gone to be restored and loved. This narrative challenges us to view others through the lens of compassion and understanding, recognizing that behind every face of suffering is a person in need of love and liberation. In our scripture today from the Gospel of Mark, Jesus was at the home of Simon and Andrew. And at sunset, people brought many people who were possessed by demons to see Jesus. And it goes on to say that Jesus cast out many of their demons and that he would not permit the demons to speak. And then our gospel says that in the morning, Jesus went throughout Galilee, preaching in synagogues and casting out demons. Now, I must confess that I struggle with all this demon talk and I can't begin to explain what Jesus thought demons really were. But this I do know from our scriptures. Jesus' approach to healing those society were labeling as possessed by evil spirits teaches us about the true nature of compassion. Jesus teaches us that true compassion is certainly not passive. It's an active, engaging force that seeks to liberate and restore people from whatever is keeping them from becoming all that they can be, to restore people from whatever is keeping them from realizing they are a beloved child of God and just as worthy as anyone else. Jesus did not shy away from any darkness that held people captive to their false beliefs, beliefs that they are not as good as others or that they don't measure up. Jesus approached all people with a heart full of love and a will to set people free. 
Jesus' acts of exorcism were not mere displays of power or fancy magic. They were manifestations of his deep love and compassion for those suffering under the weight of spiritual oppression. Jesus came to seek and save the lost, to bring healing and restoration to all aspects of human life, including spiritual bondage. The liberation that Jesus offers is all-encompassing. It is not limited to spiritual deliverance, but extends to emotional, physical, and societal restoration. In Christ, we find freedom from any and every form of bondage, physical, emotional, spiritual, anything that seeks to keep us from living the abundant life he promised. What we can learn from this story in Mark is that in our own lives, we are called to embody this same compassion. We too are called to be healers in a world rife with spiritual and emotional demons. We are to use our words, our actions, and our prayers to bring light into the darkest of places. And we are called to use our words, our actions, and our prayers to bring light into people's hearts and accept them the way they are. Just as Jesus did, we must look beyond the surface, reach out to others always with love, and offer the healing touch of compassion to those around us. And so, as we reflect on Jesus the Exorcist, let us embrace the fullness of his liberation, allowing his love and power to transform every area of our own lives, and may we also become agents of his liberating love, extending his hope and love to those around us, proclaiming that in Jesus there is freedom for all. And let us pray for the grace to be instruments of Jesus' compassionate healing in our world, reminding ourselves that no one, no one is beyond the reach of God's transforming love. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, as we close this worship service, we take time now to pause and reflect on your boundless grace for each one of us. In your infinite love, you have given us the gift of life, the beauty of creation, and the promise of your presence in every moment. O God, we thank you for your unending grace that sustains us, guides us, and uplifts us at all times. In times of joy and in moments of challenge, your grace is our constant companion, reminding us of your eternal love and compassion. We pray that your grace may continue to flow abundantly into every corner of our world. May it touch the hearts of all your people, bringing peace where there is strife, hope where there is despair, and healing where there is pain. Help us, O oh God, to be instruments of your peace in this world. And may our words and actions reflect your love and kindness so that through us, others may experience the warmth of your grace. And now, Holy One, we ask that you hear our own heart prayers in a moment of silence. O oh God, as we depart from our worship, let your wisdom be with us, protecting and guiding us in all our ways. May we carry the light of your love into our homes, our communities, and our world, spreading the message of hope and salvation to all people we meet. And we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. And as we now go from our worship, let us always remember that just as God has done for generations past, God blesses us with love and peace, God blesses us with divine presence, and God always blesses us with grace. Amen. Mm -hmm.